I have a pretty easy question for you today. When we fold our body toward our legs, is it okay to curve the back a little or should we keep it straight at all times? This is what we're going to talk about in this video. Let's go. Okay guys, so when we want to understand if curving the back is okay or not in a forward folding motion, so when we bring our body toward our legs, like this one, this is a pancake, or this one, this is a pike stretch. In order to understand if we can curve our back or not, we should analyze the position first. So ask yourself, why are we bringing our body toward our legs? To stretch certain kinds of muscles, right? Now, if we take into account the movement of hip flexion, which is the movement that happens when we fold the body down toward the legs, this is hip flexion. Hip flexion, when, it, when, when the movement happens, stretches your hamstrings, your glutes, your adductors, your lower back muscles, and some other muscles as well. But these are the major ones. So, the idea is that when you move your body toward your legs, you do want to maximize the stretch on these muscles, right? So you do want to stretch your hamstrings, you do want to stretch your glutes, you do want to stretch your adductors, your lower back, in the best way possible, okay? So, all that we do should be in that kind of direction, okay? Which is maximizing the stretch in these muscles in order to gain more range of motion with time. Now, we have to analyze what happens when we curve our back and when we keep it straight, which is a small detail that makes a big difference. When I curve my back, as you can say, I'm trying to bring my torso toward my legs, but at the same time, the angle between my trunk and the legs isn't really closing. As you can say, the more I curve, yes, I, I, it seems like with my head, I can get closer with my legs, but the angle at the hip joint doesn't change that much. And this means that I'm gaining flexibility, I'm moving, thanks to the flexion of my spine, which is the curve in my spine. And this is why people that don't have the flexibility they need to perform a straight back forward fold, which can be a pancake, a pike, whatever, usually keep their back curved. This is because they lack the flexibility in their adductors, in their hamstrings, in their glutes, in their lower back, in order to keep the back straight. Vice versa, if I keep my back flat, so I straighten my back as much as possible and I fold my body down, as you can see, the angle at the hip joint now gets really, really flat. And this is because I'm not moving thanks to the flexion of my spine. I'm moving thanks to the flexion of the hip. So rather than flexing my spine, gaining flexibility through spine flexion, I'm gaining flexibility through hip extension. This is a small detail that makes a lot of difference because when you flex your spine, you don't really close your hip angle. You're working on your spine flexibility and a little bit on your hips as well. Of course, there's not like isolation, okay? You're not just moving your spine. Of course, something is happening at your hip level. But when you keep your spine straight, then you start working on your hip joint because in that case, you're not working with your spine anymore, but you are gaining flexibility through the hip. So this means that the more you can straighten your back, the more you can stretch your muscles in the ideal way. And here's the problem. A lot of people think that when I say, okay, you gotta straighten your back when you get into a forward folding motion, a pancake, a pike, whatever, that's the only way you want to do it. So when they start working on these positions, they go like, mm, and stop after a, a centimeter or two, just to keep their back straight. But that is not the case, okay? So what I say is your intention is what matters the most. So. You do want to try to keep your back as straight as possible, but that doesn't mean that aesthetically, it gotta be super straight. Even my back, as I go into a pancake, isn't like completely flat. I'm curving just a bit on my lower back, but my intention is to work on it, is to 
straighten my lower back as much as possible, my spine and my lower back as much as possible, so I can feel the stretch in my hamstrings, adductors, glutes again, wherever like I feel it the most, depending also well, like where you're stiff the most. But when you work on these positions here, if you're not quite flexible to keep your, your back fully straight, don't worry about it. It's your intention that changes the stretch, okay? So, what I suggest to you is the following. First is to get a pair of yoga blocks like these, okay? Because they can help you a lot to gain more flexibility. And what you do want to do is you want to sit down on at least a couple of yoga blocks. So you're gonna have your hips slightly off the floor, okay? And uh, if you have a couple more, you can put the other yoga blocks in front of you. This way, what you're doing is essentially this. You are decreasing the angle between your legs and your trunk. Can you say so? My feet are on the floor now, but my hips are higher. So this diagonal line on my leg is creating, when I fall down, less pressure on my hips so I can gain more flexibility, okay? Just in, in simple words. And uh, another thing you can do is to use a weight, okay? So I have a yoga wheel here. You can use a weight, you can use one of these, a dumbbell or kettlebell, whatever, and you put it behind your back like this, okay? So what you essentially want to do is you want to get down with your trunk, okay? Keeping your body, as I want to repeat to you, you do, your intention is all that matters, okay? So your intention is to keep your body as straight as possible, okay? But when you go down, don't worry about it too much. Of course, if you feel like, okay, I'm just going down, like flexing my spine, okay, that is not the ideal work you do want to do. One of the things you do want to care about the most is, are you feeling the stretch in the correct areas? Which means, when I go down here, am I feeling the stretch on my hamstrings, on my glutes, on my adductors? If the answer is yes, then I'm performing the stretch correctly because I'm feeling the stretch. Even though when you go down, you, you kind of, you might do something like this. So the back is not completely straight. I don't care, okay? It's, it's okay, it's okay because you're still, working on it. Your intention is to keep it as straight as possible. It's gonna come as you gain more flexibility, but you gotta build that. And one way you can build that is just do the work, do the work, okay? So, yoga blocks under your hips to start. Some yoga blocks under your chest, just as a measure, okay? So I, I know that when I go down, I want to touch the yoga blocks so I know that I can cover this range of motion, weight behind your back. I keep my back as straight as possible. I go down, I touch, and I come back up, okay? You can repeat this kind of work for six to 10 reps, and on the last one, you want to remain both here with your hands behind your back for five to 10 breaths, and then here with your hands in front of you, you just want to relax and try to gain more flexibility here for another five to 10 breaths, okay? Even though your back isn't going to be completely straight, again, don't worry, work on it, and then step number two. Step number two, you essentially just want to work with your hips on the floor rather than a couple of yoga blocks. Could be more, could be three yoga blocks, or could be a box, something like that. You just want to play a little bit with it to find your height. The more you raise your hips off the floor, the easier the exercise is gonna get. And then from there, you progressively want to get closer and closer to the floor until you're gonna be seated on the floor. Now, this stage of your progression in your forward folds is essential. And you do want to understand this technique here. What I suggest people do usually is this. So, you do want to start on top. You do want to fold your body down with your back as straight as possible until you can, okay? So let's suppose you can arrive here. Then you stop and now you start curving your back. You go down, you just care about your head getting closer to the floor. You explore the deepest range of motion you can. 
Then you come back, straighten it as much as you can as soon as possible, come back up, okay? As you make progress, okay, so you want to remove the yoga blocks, it's gonna be the same. So, as long as you can, you keep your back straight. When you arrive to the point where you can't anymore, curve, explore the best range of motion you can. Come back and up with the back straight again. So, this is the best technique I suggest people use just because of this simple idea. You explore your best range of motion with your back straight. So you're doing your, <laughs> your job, okay? With the cleanest technique possible. Then you curve. The moment you curve, that doesn't mean that you're not gaining flexibility. Some of it is gonna come from your spine, but some of it is gonna come also from your hips. Because as you can see, as I'm here, I curve, yes, but I'm also closing the angle at the hip level a bit. Then I come up, straighten it again, and come up, okay? So, you're kind of doing the best you can in both ways, which means with your back straight and with your back curved. But that doesn't mean that you're just using the back curved variation, which would be the problem, okay? Because this is different from just going down like this. Can you see? Now I'm not using my flexibility because I'm not closing the, this angle, okay? So at first, I keep my back straight because I do want to close the angle between my trunk and my legs. As I close the angle maximally, then I try to do it even more by curving my back, by allowing my back to curve, and then I come out, trying to follow the same route. So come up, straighten again, and up all the way up, okay? So guys, this is all you have to know about curving your back or not during your forward fold motions. So. I demonstrated this entire progression in a pancake stretch, so with my legs apart, but you can use the same strategy in whatever kind of forward folding motion you do want to use. Could be a pie stretch with your legs together, etc. I hope that at this point, everything is clear. Remember that if you have any questions or doubts for me, you can leave a comment down below. Also a thumb up if you appreciate the video. And if you want to use my flexibility exercises, discover how to gain more flexibility, etc. You should check out my flexibility guy app following the link in the description down below. With that said, thank you so much for staying with me today. Have a nice stretch and see you in the next video. I traveled all the way to Japan in this place of silence and peace to find out the secrets of flexibility training. I'm in this temple right now because here is where I believe it's hidden the secret I'm looking for. It gotta be somewhere around here. What? A book? Nani? Honwa? Secret deska? Amazon de kaimasu ka? Oh, so ka. Arigato gozaimasu. Stretching Modern Flexibility Methods is the complete playbook to master your flexibility and you can check it out on Amazon right now. Huh? It works! It works!